when it hit. Um, it's hiding left. I want to get in the trade when it hits one deviation. I went short on this. I want to get in it, or get out of the trade, I'm sorry. I want to get out of the trade when it hit one deviation. And one of the points I made on my radio show this morning was don't exit a trade based on the spread price. The best thing you can do is trade off your chart, okay? Um, whenever you're doing like a directional trade like I was doing here. And so you could actually use that stop trigger and say, okay, well, what is one deviation? One deviation is 4305.75. So I could actually go in and go, okay, well, if it gets within you know, X price over here, then I can set up my stop trigger on this contract to exit out of the trade for me whenever it hits that specific price. Like right here. I could also use this. Let's say I wanted to get out when the market hit 1.300. I could use it to take profit when the market hit 1.300. Not necessarily the spread. Because you know how that premium can get a little bit weird, right? So when the spread hits 1.300, not the spread, when the indicative is 1.30, get me out of the trade. At the market, you know, plus 10 ticks for an offset. So you could use it to take your profits based on your charts, to set your stops based on your chart, without having to be an expert on you know, spreads and stuff. Okay? Then you can also just hop out by clicking the little icon. Pop. Make sure if you do close the trade, or if you're going to edit an order, that you do get rid of any um, working orders that are sitting out there. show you a trick, okay? This should work. i open up a couple of these just randomly. In the Nadex platform, right here, okay? There's this button right here called Ticket, and it shows you what tickets you have open, like out of ticket windows. If you click that, it'll bring up your ticket. So if you're trying to find any tickets that might be hiding behind windows and where they are, or you know, a certain one, it's a very cool, simple, easy feature. Right there. Okay? Let's see here. Try to just go through all the questions. Answer each one of them. Um, so you can use the stop trigger. Okay, so Ezra, so I just showed how to use the stop trigger to get in a trade. So if I was going to get in when it was going to hit X price, then that's how I would do it. I would just set it at the indicative, okay? Um, and let's see here. Yeah, if you try to, if I try to get in, like, I'm like, hey, I'm going to buy when it gets, you know, up here. And I should put in a buy now to be a buy limit. Buy limit means buy at this price or better. This is the most I'm willing to pay. If you give me a better price, I'll take it. It'll fill it instantly. If I wanted to wait till it hit that price, like maybe till it broke this recent high, okay, then I would use the stop trigger to have it trigger to get me in when it hit that price. Does that make sense, Ezra? So let's use the indicative price on the stop trigger, getting when it hit a certain price. Watch icon does not show until you're in a trade. Okay, just open a trade. So watch this trade. Go here. We hit the ticket icon. And inside the ticket icon, hit stop trigger. There you go. So, and then you switch it back to base. See my whole screen. You can change the zoom. So whenever you open up somebody's window, if I open up binary hand over here, and let's say it doesn't fit or something, you can go over here and you can make it three quarters, whatever. You click this button. You can 
size it, that would cut it off. So you probably want to go down and like you make like half, quarter, three quarter. You can zoom in if you want to really see like what's going on. Okay. So you can use these little buttons and icons to you know, play with these things up here. But mainly this this section right here will help you on adjusting the charts or the, the shared screen to do your specific way to do it. Um So as far as where to do it, I mean, it depends on what system you're trading. So that becomes a big black button. Well, I read the chart. So I'm going in and I'm looking at my deviation level, like I was this morning. And I know that a majority of the time when it breaks down, it's going to go out and hit deviation. And so I went short when it bounced off of ice. I waited for the apex trend flip the MVP and the trend band and the trend bar chop filter to all show red at the same time right off the coming out. I figured we're going to hit this the settlement, step down off of it, short when everything lines up, everything's red okay, and I go short could have taken profit here, I actually added on when it went right over here, it's about to break out but either take profit there or go all the way to my target which is one I mean there's another half deviation, I didn't get it because on here talking, but that's okay I mean, that's, you know, another trade right there that was available. Um, and so, I mean, I'm just looking at sort of, you know, what what makes sense. You know, that's one of the things. I try to teach you systems to get you going, and they, you know, systems are fine. They're great. And they're required because you have to learn how to be systematic. You have to learn how to see things. But ideally, you know, what I what I want here at Apex is for you to not just follow the group, become the group. To be able to go in and see the trade. And go, everything is red. Everything is green. It's hitting on an ice zone. And it's hitting on a deviation. Or a couple points of it. It's starting to pull back. Okay, let's go short. If we're going to go short, where is the market going to go? Don't just wait for it to come back and hit something. I mean, that's a, that's, you need that parameter as you're starting. But hopefully you're going to go, okay, I got 0.5 levels here. I got this. I mean, you got several things going on. You could go and you could look at just the deviation zones. You also have a support zone down here. Okay, so I went in, I took this off on the institutional zone, I took some profit right there on half my contract on two of them. So, I mean, I just want you to just look and see, it's all red, it's all green, where are we going next, you know? And if I'm wrong, where do I get out? What makes the most sense? I mean, you can go in really strict and you can use 10 ticks or 14 ticks or whatever, um, or you can not, you know? So, um, I like to use often highs and lows, so... Uh, but you need to have some sort of risk management plan in place, and you say your size needs to reflect that. Um, you know, one person mentioned a trend catcher. I mean, I can add trend catcher on there, definitely. You know, I love trading trend catcher. We can add that in with it. So, so how much can you read? Lori already makes fun of me for already having everything that I have on my start. So I'm not just watching price action. I'm waiting for all my indicators to come together, and then I'm confirming with price action. Because price action can easily be deceiving, okay, in and of itself. Indicators can easily be deceiving in and of themselves. So put them all together and think it a lot clearer, okay? So, you know, come over here. We're looking at this. And this is one of the big enhancements I love. Um, I know it feels a little sloppy or whatever, but uh, I have what I have on here is the, I have the continuum bars, so let me walk through what I got going on. So see, I mean, Trinketcher gave me the same short, actually it gave it to me sooner, and it's really good about giving it sooner, as long as you have a little bit of a filter to, you know, you know filter it out, because um, it's going to give you the, it's going to give you the fastest turn out of everything. Um, so if we go over here, and let's look at, okay, so I have on first, let's go to the data series. This is not, oh, this is what Daryl's using. I should use, like, I want you to learn from it, okay? <laughs> so uh, I got 8 and 10 as my brick size. So if I, it has to go up 8 ticks or down 10 ticks, you know, if it's, if it's trending up, it has to go 8 more ticks or reverse 10 ticks to make a new bar. If it's trending down, it has to go down 8 ticks or reverse 10 ticks to make a new bar. Or 
or five minutes after that. So it adds a little time aspect to my chart. I love these continuum bars. I use them on everything. Okay? You can make them five. You can make them 15. You can make them 30, 60. You know, whatever you prefer. Obviously, the larger you make them, the less impact that time thing is going to have unless the market's just really, really slow. So, uh, if you're going to make the time larger, you're probably going to want the bar size to be larger. Just, you know, think about how long it normally moves during that period of time. Um, and then, so once I got that done, then I'm hopping over here. And on my bar style, what I'm doing, so go to the bar style indicator, okay? And notice I have my, you know, up and down color to black because I'm using open, high, low, close. The reason is because I'm going to use a different indicator to color my bar, and I want to see the true up close, true down close. Okay? Uh, so, because, like, you'll notice over here, let me find something. Like, there's an up close bar right there, but it's red. Okay? So I want to see the true price section. I don't want, like, a hiking ashy that's going to uh, paint my bar something that's total, totally bogus. I don't want just a, a plain Ranko that's going to hide price action, okay? So, I want to actually see um, the real price action, okay? And so, I use open, I will close, that lets me see the real price action, and it lets me color the shadow, okay, on the bar. Now, I have a couple ways I can do the shadow. I can do automatic size, which works just fine for me on continuum. Um, if I'm using shadow bars, shadow shadow bars, not the shadow continuous, the shadow bars period without the time factor, then I'll make the mode over here, I'll make it manual and I'll make it equal um, to the diagnostic arm switching over. So if I was using 12 ticks, then, you know, I'll make that ma mode manual and I'll make it 12 ticks. So we can turn it off, but I like it. Okay. Um, let's see here. Got my deviation levels on, nothing special there. Got my deviations on as well. So this is deviation high to low. This is just measuring from a high to a low, how far is it moved. So the blue line's the max is moved all day, okay? So, I think that's where it's at right now. So we're sitting basically right at a 1.1 deviation from the high of the day. And so this lets me measure two things. Deviation levels are the price from settlement. This is from the higher from you can go to the study section of the form and tell you all about the indicator. Ice, no special settings, just turn it on. Let it get ready. Um, and that's, you know, basically taking the true tick volume. We're not just doing like a, basically we're actually calculating this outside of Ninja to get true tick volume by tick to get the most accurate ice levels we can. Um, and we got this working now on what, New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar, pound dollar, and euro dollar. And we're working on adding them on to the other inverted dollar pairs. Not the big dollar, but with the quote currency. And then, then we'll add in all the fun other crops. Um, let's see here. Got trend flip on. That's the special. Just added it on. Okay. Um, got trend bands on. They're a little harder to see. I mean, straight up, I'll be very, you know, obviously you can go in and you can make them lighter, darker, whatever. They're a little harder to see on there with the uh, fellers, but no. You can also leave the lines, and you can make the lines thicker if you want to. Like this, go in and make those thicker. You can change them from line to, you know, this is the stuff where you get to you know, play around with it. But uh, you can make it, you know, a hash sign, so a little bit, you know, more shown up there. Uh, I got MVP on there. I set the two volatile lines to transparent. Open those up. That I'm too transparent. Uh, most of the stuff I've just thrown on. Expected volume, the one change I made on it is I set it at 10 minutes. I like 10 minute volume. Okay? Um, I got the trend chop filter on there. That's actually what's coloring at the bars for me. Okay? So even when I have up those bars and saying, hey, we're still in a short trend, this helps you also not get faked out like on trend catcher. Okay? So if you're doing the normal trend catcher, you add this on. This can help out. Um, if you just want the trend. If you if the chop is like too much orange for you, like on the settings you're using, you can always go in here to the properties, and you can set paint chop one, paint chop two to false, and then it will just give you the red and green, it won't give you the orange chop, okay? It's not a lot of chop on the video, but you can
can go in there and you can set that to fault. Don't change these to transparent in your bars, you won't be able to see them. Just change the chop to fault, okay, on those two, chop one and chop two. Um, I have a toolbar shortcut so I can draw on my chart. And then add it on the string catcher, you know, just to also show, you know, basically it's confirming the same thing. So, I mean, once the bar goes down, it's going to go down, it's going with it, you know, there's an oscillation, but hey, we're still painting, you know, red. We got a little bit of a, if I zoom in right there, really zoom in, you see that the trend band is actually a little bit green, but we're still painting short trend. And that's on our trend, like, make sure you see that indicator, because that's the one I'm really, I like it a lot. The lipstick indicator, or the crown indicator, or whatever <laughs> what he calls it. But uh, bar trend shop filter. So you see me making all these trades, that thing's on my chart. Okay? Because it gets rid of the noise for me. Um, like you get that long trend catcher, but it's like, nope, we're still short. Okay, I'm not paying attention. Get another long one, no, nope, we're still short. Not paying attention. Long, nope. Long. Oh, oh green. Okay, cool. Boom, where do we go? Oh, we got to support to take profit. So, that's that's how I'm using the trick catcher with the colors there. I make it, I make the colors confirm the trick catcher. The best trades are when everything agrees. Don't over trade. And again, look at it. I mean, are we running right into a support zone? You know, if I buy right here, might have a little bit of an issue, right? We're going down. I mean, look at the price action. These are little things that I don't want you to, I don't want a newbie to get caught up in all this. That's why I hate coming in here and saying all this stuff. It feels like, I got years before I could find anything, you know? I don't want you to feel that way. I'm just trying to show you this is how I use this whole pack we just released you all this week. We've been using this for a long time. But, I mean, you can see when it's all red and all green, all red, all green, you know, it becomes pretty obvious, um, the trades that are sitting there. And when it's flat, you know, then, I mean, be looking for a trade in between institutional zones, right? It breaks through on volume. Okay, cool. Get out. If you were long, you should have took profit. Went short, but they went long again. You got stopped on that one. Okay, you're out of it. All right, boom, it breaks through with volume, you go short, where are you going to go short to? Well, I'm going to go short to a couple places, one, I'm going to go down to the next deviation level, or I'm going to go to the next zone, whichever one comes first. So, well, the deviation level came first. Okay, but get out, let's take profit there. It goes up. All right, so I'm buying, maybe I'm targeting this, and then all of a sudden I see a new zone. That's the zone four, so I'm going to take profit. I go short, back down the deviation. Okay, got another one, buy, boom, right to the zone. Sell, right back down to it. Oop, got stopped out, get out of the trade. Comes back down, going short. Okay, break it through the volume, goes short. I get a new zone. Uh, take profit. Okay, or, you know, get out of break even. Take a buy on it. Take that to, you know, use the next deviation or the next zone. Take profit. You know, I mean, just rinse and repeat. I, do I, am I talking like lightning fast? Like where, or am I, where y'all getting it? Or. I'm trying to show trade after trade after trade. <laughs> Am I talking at a speed where you get it? Coming down, it's hitting a deviation level. You're hitting a support level. I'm in institutional zone. You buy. Everything turns green. Let's go for it. It comes up. It slows down. It's going sideways. We form a resistance side, a bear side. You know, we take profit. Okay, it goes red. We go short. We take it back down. I mean, we'll just rinse and repeat. Is that? Yeah, I know the fire hose. But I mean, what I'm trying to show you, I hope, is just pay attention to the chart. You know. So, yeah, the spread selection is, is that's another area of study, you know, but first, you ha if you can't read the chart, you can't pick the spread. Does that make sense? If you can't read the chart, you can't pick the binary. <laughs> okay? So, I mean, you can, but how well is that really going to work in your odds? You know, maybe you win a whole lot, but when you lose, you wipe it all out, you know? So, if you can't read the chart, it's going to be very hard to trade an option. I mean, 
I traded, you know, options for years and futures and forex. I didn't look at the the call options chart on Apple to trade Apple options. I looked at Apple, and then when I made a decision based on what I thought Apple was going to do, you know, break out, go long, short, neutral, whatever. Then I went and found the option. So, you know, you really want to go in and look at the read the chart before you try to trade a derivative off of it. Okay. And then what? It's like if you're trying to master spread. It's like trying to master options but have no idea how to pick up anything on the chart. That's going to be tough. <laughs> know how to read the chart, trade it, then hop over and add in a derivative, an option, or a spread, or a binary, or, you know, whatever. Uh, does the bar chop filter take the place of the trend catcher chop filter? I wouldn't say it takes the place of. So, but I like it better, personally. I've been using it a lot more often. They are completely different. So one of them is meant to confirm trend catcher, but I think this one actually, in my opinion, does a little bit better job. So you can try both of them on there and see when both of them line up. But they both they both are confirmation indicators. They do completely different ones. You'll notice I don't have it on my chart. Though. That doesn't mean now I haven't honestly spent like a hundred hours like looking at this thing backwards and going which one gives you a better edge. Just me, this is clean. Uh, you know, the question came up, how do you read your chart? I mean, well, I only have two lower indicators. Well, I guess that's three. Well, I don't, I only have two. I only have two lower indicators. I got my deviation. I got my bar is colored, and I'm just looking for a lot of green and a lot of red. So, you know, did Judah hop on there and just, you know, color up the chart for me? Or if he did, you paint it all red? That's the short. You know. The only thing I'm going to look at, though, is I'm going to make sure I finish those zones and those levels. Um, ice. So ice deviations and zones where I expect to see the market be bouncing off of this. So areas where I might want to either tighten my stop, tighten profit, or if I am going to enter a trade, it gives me a great place to go into a really tight stop loss. Let's see here. What other questions do we have on just the indicators I have on the charts, how I'm picking a trade? If I'm in here on a future, I mean, you need to know what you're willing to risk. Okay, so that needs to be your, your first question. Okay? First question is, how much am I willing to risk per trade? All right? That will determine how much size you have and what instrument you use. Like, maybe you don't have the money to trade a future. You should be trading it for us. Okay? So, how much do I risk per trade? And now... If I can get my stop tighter, then I can maybe do two contracts, or three contracts, or four, or five, or six. Okay? So, how much do I risk per trade? At the most. And that'll help. And then the next thing is just look at price action and what makes sense. So, you know, to me, I mean, looking at this trade, you know, what makes the most sense is, you know, a larger stop that most people would be comfortable with. But about five points, like right here above the recent high where the resistance is. That makes the most sense. Um, I didn't have to take, so on the first 10 I did, you know, I actually had that stop. On the second 10 I didn't have to because the risk was so low on the price. Now, also, you can be a futures trader, and my, one of my favorite strategies is the ultimate hedge. Okay? On the ultimate hedge, I combine spreads with the future. So that way, I'm using it to help hedge off my risk, and so it goes against me. It's like a married put, married call, okay? It's like where you buy a put to hedge a stock, or buy a call to hedge a short stock. So, and that's why in the scanner we put the ratios for you. So wherever that went. Right here, click on that little icon, it'll tell you, euro dollar, one. Made express. So if you go over to ES, it'll say, you know, five. And add back to say two. So, um, and that's actually why that ratio is there. So, if you want to mirror the underlying and if you want to hedge spreads against the underlying. Um, let's see here. But, I mean, I'm, I'm reading price action with the indicator. So, and I first had to trade, to be able to do that, I had to first have systems. You ask Lori, I mean, I'm like, 
we're in there, and the first thing we do is we're like, okay, let's systemize this, go in, A, B, C, D, E, you know, and because otherwise you're just randomly guessing. So first I need a system, and then after I have a system, and that is my guiding foundational principle, then I can go, okay, so now can I look at a few things that make sense when I'm looking at the chart? Do I have an idea of where I want my stop? What needs to happen for me to get an entry? And if I do get an entry, when do I think I'm wrong, and when do I think I'm right? Okay, and where should I not be greedy, but take my profit? And, I mean, you see a lot of these. Like, if I go and I target the deviation, I mean, it, it would have popped up pretty much at the same price anyway. So, you know, MVP, very easy thing to use to trail your stops with, an MVP predictor. It's still my favorite trailing stop. So, the other one would be, if you want a little bit more room, would be, uh, Trend Catcher is great to, listen, it's flipping on you, but uh, you also got Trend Flip is awesome. So, Trend Flip is a great trailing stop. Uh, actually gives you a little more room than MVP, uh, so either one of those. But it, to me, it's, it's called, the, the actual term is called confluence. It's when multiple indicators come together and say the same thing. So when that happens, that's when I like to strike. And I'm not trading all day. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you got to sit here for eight hours a day. Blah, blah. No, I don't. <laughs> I trade for an hour or two a day. I sit back. I look for the best setups across multiple markets, and when I see a really good one, I hit it. So, you know, you've seen pretty much 80% of the trades I've made today already, like what I showed you. And I had some smaller, you know, binary trades and stuff that I did as well. But I trade, I'll trade spreads a whole lot bigger than I'll trade back. So, Ezra, so to get out of the spread, first I want to, I also want to, one thing I want to do is, do I need to get out of the spread? Like, if it's a $29 risk, do I need to get out? Okay. Um, and I made 70 bucks, so no real reason to hop out of the trade for contract. Uh, so then it's just taking my profit. Uh, so I don't have to worry about a stop loss on that one at least. And then the next one is, you know, where is my take profit, you know? And then if that take profit is, at a level, then I can put that in, like when the indicative hits this, get it, or if I want to take profit based on the spread, I can just put that in, like I said, like I would have put it in really at .6 above the floor, uh, just the way that, where that spread was at that moment. And then the other thing would be uh, for your stop loss, like if you do have a stop loss, then just look at swing highs and swing lows. So they usually make more sense than just about anything. I don't have a one-size-fits-all. I put it on there. I make sure it makes sense. So, but if I want to see GC, then I'll just flip it over. If you think I just gave you the Holy Grail, I didn't. <laughs> um, the Holy Grail is good risk management, and which means risk like not risking too much, setting your stop, and taking your profit, and then executing in a consistent manner, not just changing everything every. Um, is me indicators are to add clarity. I mean, technically, you can see pretty much everything in price action, but it's really easy to get subjective in what you see. Really, really easy to get subjective. And so this allows me to remain objective and go, okay, wow, everything says long. Yep, that was long. Or sometimes I'm like, yeah, no way. Mark as flat as can be. I don't care if everything. Is A swing high is when the market went up and it's going down now. What was that recent high? Market went down, it's going up. Now you're buying. What was that recent low? Like the most recent low, the most recent high. Open G. It takes time. <laughs> there you go. And that's even five.
as that loads up. So here's gold. Same setting. Nothing's changed. Go down here. We got all this red. 10 o'clock, say, you know, looking at that, right? Comes down, we get, you know, we bounce off the center point there on the ice. Bounces off of it with volume. Starts going up. Bit long going. Everything green, 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 green. We hit settlement. You get a better be nervous, better expected to oscillate a little bit at settlement. Should not be a surprise to anybody that oscillates at settlement. So you either want to take part of your profit or tighten your stop, or take all your profits and then set an entry profit to go out of it, or look for it short if we get any red. We don't have any red going on. So everything's staying green, staying in. Going on up, we do hit a resistance zone. Definitely going to want to tighten stop if you're not already. Okay, and get ready for a short. Still no red. Goes on up, hits the half deviation level. Okay, and now we're starting to get some, you know, flat markets right here. And I expect the bands to get a little bit of, you know, red in it. But overall, I mean, we're just oscillating, oscillating, and then all of a sudden, now we're starting to get chop, and then red. Okay, let's let's get out. If you're not out of the trade, it's time to get out. So most likely, based on that move right there, you'd be pretty tempted to pop out because you get one deviation. But, um, green, 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 and then all of a sudden we got like sideways markets going on. It's just that half deviation again, comes down, hits it again. We've established a new resistance zone. And you know, now look for, you know, potential short stop. Tight stop would be a swing low. <laughs> so if it goes up here and it hits this, I may like literally tighten my stop like right up there. Get out. That was a, it just hit it. So it hits that DVD. I'm on, I'm not an NQ right now, I'm on So, I'm at least using the MVP predictor, or the trend flip, okay? Trail my stop up, all right, at a minimum. So I see how the MVP is down here, and we're just hitting this deviation over and over and over again, okay? Tightening my stop would be like putting it like above a recent bar low. Being like, hey, you know what, I'm very happy with the massive profit I just so, I mean, that just went up 10 points, that's $1,000 on a single contract, I think I'll be happy with that. And uh, let me go ahead and type my stop to flies, great, if it doesn't, then I'm out of the trade. So you have an objective trail, but then as you learn to just see it hitting these zones, you can tighten that up. So, hey, it entered this resistance zone. Okay, so we can go ahead and, you know, tighten our stop up a little bit. We don't have to leave it all the way down here. Tighten it up a little bit. Where, where it would not be surprising to see it turn around. It goes up and it hits this. We could tighten it up a little bit. Okay? Like, don't just tighten it up because you're up profit. Okay? Tighten it up because there's something on the chart telling you, hey, it's really possible the market could split. So I can put it, like, right below this deviation zone. I could go up here. When it enters inside the institutional zone, a couple bars, the bar finally closes inside of it. Okay? The bar closes inside there. I'm going to put it right below that. Never comes down to break out of it. Goes on up. Okay, now it finally hit the, you know, entered into the 0.5 deviation zone. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. Then, really, I'd be out of, you know, that'd probably be the best place to be out of the trade right there. So, I mean, you could get out higher, potentially, but if you just tighten it up when it closed up inside that deviation zone or inside the institutional zone, tighten, tighten. So that's, when I say tighten, that's what I mean. I'm tightening it below recent price action of a bar that closed in a price zone area where you're looking where the market could possibly oscillate or reverse. Does that help define it a little bit more for you, Ezra? On how to tighten it from the objective to a little bit more of the price action base. So bar closes inside of the deviation zone or institutional zone. It's hard to get this stuff out of my in, in my eyes and out of my mouth. <laughs> so I'm trying to as much as I can to help you out. I deal with some you know live charts here. Let me pull NASDAQ up today so we can talk about that. On Fridays, usually I like to go in, I like to pound NASDAQ in the morning, and usually I don't trade it much after that. I go in and I take a nice big trade and I'm done. There are some great days I miss out on, but it's nice to walk into the weekend not worrying about it, right?
NASDAQ up one more. more for you here, though. So let's just look at it. Okay, so NASDAQ fell. We were looking for that one deviation move, and it got that deviation great. And then it had some pretty wild great stuff while we've been talking. Okay. So it came down. It's bouncing to one and one and a half. I mean, if you want to shoot for maybe a possible big drop that breaks down underneath this, or if you want to bounce back, I mean, we have two trades. Like right now, I'd be short. The stop right up here. Where would I be going? If I was going to take that, I'm going to take it on down to a two deviation until we set a new support. Let me trail my stop right here. Keep it tight. Just in case. I mean, that's, I mean you can still keep trading. So, but once you've hit, you know, a decent profit for the day, then call it. So right now, you know, up here. Expect oscillation. It's, I mean, it's, it's always doing it. It's going to be harder at this point. So, easy money is often in the way. We get those big, big moves. And if it hits it, I mean, here's the only thing I can definitely tell you is you know, we got up here, we got our predictor up here, we're close. If it hits that, you know, and you're out, get out. <laughs> Like, don't try to wait and see if it might come on back down. You know, get out, you want to go long. It targets the zoning. That would not be unheard of at all for it to fly up there and hit that. Okay? So, put a stop right there. See if it'll pop on up. So, but, uh, if it's getting too choppy and too hard, back off for a minute. Make everything line up. You know, this is just this is going to be hard. After you've had that much down, here's what's happened. All the floor traders have went home. Okay? Um, I'll show you. Minute bar. But, I mean, what I, how do I personally like to trade? I like to not be as hard on my stop. I like to go, okay, when I look at this, I expect it to do this. If it doesn't do it, I'm going to get more cautious. Um, it just gets, you, you got to use a little bit of price action. It's just really bastard. Let's see here. We didn't get it today. <laughs> um, I'm looking to see if we got it. I do get him quite a bit. I look for a spike between like 11 and 1. And usually when I set spike, I know that they're done on their trade. So. so, I mean, it's about as spiky as we got because we had so much volume this morning. But that, to me, that was the done trade right there. So, and I like to look at Russell because it's just it's less liquid, so it's more apparent. Um, like right there, floor traders are done. Okay, right there in a little 11. So here you see this one is a little bit later, 1146. Floor traders are pretty much done, and then just sort of petered on down. You see this over and over again, and it's not always just visual. Like a lot, I mean, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Right there, I call it. I, I like it when it's really big. Sometimes they'll get them really, really large. But uh. You can even do this over on like pound. He's neat. This is using expected volume, but I call it basically the middle finger trade. <laughs> it's basically when you see a big spike around 11 o'clock. That means the floor traders are done, and the market usually is going to go the other way. <laughs> so right there, that's your middle finger trade. Oh, boom, pound dollar, flat. And but it's, it's right around 11 to one. So that's just a you know either it's going to flatten out or it's going to reverse. So either do a reversal trade or do a premium flush trade. We'll see it. Boom. Sometimes they're huge. And sometimes they're, you know, little. But 
could be as early as 10, but it's usually in between 11. But I'd say 10 to 1 would be your widest range. But, like, right there, I mean, you can see it spiked, spiked, there's a big one right there. That's a big middle finger trade. So you can just pop, pop right back up. But see how it flew down, but it took a long time to go back up? Floor traders are done. Some, if they're super liquid, you won't see it because it just, you know, it all like runs together. So, and so yeah, we go over look at say DAX. I haven't looked at it on DAX. DAX has a lot more liquidity, a lot more liquid. Some of it has it at 4, some of it has it like at 10. It drops off, you can see that right there. I mean, it, either it works really consistently, or it doesn't. So now, there may be times where you can't see it, but when it happens, it has to be really consistent, or else it means nothing. Okay, so don't go and say, oh, I'm going to apply this to every market, because it doesn't work on every market. So, I usually look at it on Russell, I look at it on like pound dollar, stuff like that. So, but I don't know, I don't know if I'd use it on that. Let's see. It's still pretty liquid. They're done, but it's still heading on down right there. Let's see. That's a nice trend. Look at that thing. What does that chart when I need to say, right? So there's one right there. So there's one right there. It's happening right around 11. Right there. There we go. So now we got a footsie middle finger trade. <laughs> you can go in and buy the footsie in the day. You sell the footsie in the day. You know, after you get the middle finger right there. So, Daryl Martin middle finger trade. I don't know if that's a good thing to be called after. But it works really well. Like on the instrument it works on, it works really well. So there's one right there. Boom, spikes. Okay. Whatever the way the market's been trending, that's when it's done trending. Is what you're expecting when you see that. So even this one, may not huge, but the market's been a bit trending up up to that point. So it's expected to be flat in the end of the day. Or reverse. There's a great one right there. Wow. See? Even I'm learning something. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add this to my list. <laughs> I'll see this. But it's pretty freaking sweet. Uh, that one would have got you. Okay. Let's see here. That one won. I mean, remember, we're going to 415, so. You got a neutral or reversal trade. Uh, yeah, overall, it's pretty nice. Flattened out right there. So. That's an easy one. But, uh, anyway, uh, any other questions? Okay, the first two days, let's see. So the green institutional zone served to make the market go up or slow the downward market already plot the broken zone. I definitely plot the broken zone. Um, so they don't, they don't make the market do anything. Orders make the market do anything, okay? Where the orders are, the market goes. So I look for the market to either bounce off of them or break through them. That's, you know, obvious. Um, I expect a bounce. I'll put a tight, if I expect a bounce, I'll put a tight stop, okay? And I'll usually be looking for a range-bound trade. Um, when I'm looking for a bounce, I mean, I want, I want things to slow down and start turning. I'm not just going to buy just because it hits it, unless I want to just hop in and do a really tight stop. So if volume is exceeding, there's no reason to think, hey, it may not bust through them comes right down to that one, and then it forms a zone, it bounces off of it, gets a new zone, comes down, busts that one a little bit, makes a new zone, you know, 
Like, but we're we're through like people being pounded all day. People have either lost or made a lot of money today. Um, and you know, but yeah, the broken zones. I mean, they're they're broken. So I mean, all that does is make you show the broken versus like take them off your chart. But yeah, I mean, it's going up, coming down, going up, coming down. So uh, I mean, if you want to see, here's my settings. I just load it as is. The way you're getting it is the way I set it up. So, just what it is out of the box. Okay? But I like it to, you know, exceed it with volume if I'm going to be taking a break out of it. I love to use them as um, trailing stops if I'm going long. Okay? So let's say you're long in the trade and you're staying in this trade and you give it up and I get a new zone right here. Then, I mean, that's going to be, like, it forms here, okay, you know, the it breaks out of that. Well, that's going to be a great trailing stop for me, so you can use the trailing stop. Uh, if I'm going to buy, I'm going to make it break out of that new short zone, because so I'm going to re-enter the trade. I want it to break out of that short zone. If I'm going to re-enter this trade, I want it to break out this short zone, okay, before I buy. So basically just breaking the price. Well, the color matters in the sense of, I am going to be biased somewhat to being cautious that that may be a point where I expect it to bounce, where I may expect it to go down if it breaks, like, like I expect it to bounce off of it, okay? Uh, but if, it, if I'm going to go against the zone color, I'm going to uh, make it break out of it. Like, I'm not going to do a sell in the middle of it. Like, whatever the lowest low is right there where that zone is, I'm going to sell below that if I'm going to sell. Does that help? Now, I could buy, you know, by the time I buy, it's going to be a bust anyway. But I'm going to be really cautious on adding on to my sells when I see this zone. So if we're over here on the right side of the chart, okay, and we get a new zone, okay, I need to be very aware that the market may easily reverse it. I should not add on a short position unless it breaks below the low of this zone. Okay? And I need to, if I haven't tightened my stop, I probably need to tighten my stop. Then all of a sudden the market reverses. Going up. Okay, I get another zone. Pops up. Okay, there we go. Got the zone now. I need to tighten my stop. I'm probably out of this trade already. If I'm going to add on to my long, I haven't really got a full on short yet. We're going to want to see it bust through, bust through. Okay, now we can buy at top of that zone. Okay, so I'm probably going to want to tighten my stops again. If I'm going to buy, I'm going to wait until it busts out of it. And so I'm going to want red, right? So wait, okay, boom, bust out. Now I buy, oscillating. Now we've hit, you know, deviation level. Now I need to tighten my stop. Boom, turn around. I hope that helps trying to figure out how the best way to describe it. There's really no if there's a ho ho low volume or high volume day. Often if you see the DAX overnight have high volume, you'll see R have high volume. If the DAX have low volume, you'll often see R have low volume. That's a, I mean, that's not always, but it's a pretty good indication. Um, see here. One thing you're going to want to probably work on, Ernesto, is I don't know if you're working on playing between these zones, but when you have lower volume, you're more likely to have more... You may have trends, okay, but you'll, they'll usually take their sweet time, Okay. They're not like, oh, I just dropped, you know, 40 points in a second, right? So you get a little bit more of this type of action right here, okay? And so that's part of the reason why I'm going to this with you today, too, is to look at that support and resistance zone on that institutional zone right there, where it's plotting support and resistance, but it's factoring in, you know, how many bars back and all this other fun stuff. But looking at that and going, okay, how can I play between these levels? by combining these pieces together so I can play that chop because there's a lot of money in chop. A 
lot of money. That's how most floor traders prefer choppy markets. Okay? So when they things get crazy, they start getting knocked out of the way. Um, so you go in here and boom, it bounces off, and all of a sudden, then you see a sell zone. Okay, well, I'm not going to keep buying if it doesn't break above it. If I see a little bit of red, okay, I'm going to go short. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go down, back down to buy. If I buy, okay, maybe I get stopped out of the trade, but I had a really tight stop. It's right below that low of that zone, right? And I redo it again. So pop it on up. It goes up. It makes a new sell zone. Okay, so I'm going to buy. I need to wait for it to bust through there, but I probably need to take profit. Up. All right, take a profit. It does bust through. Where am I going to go? Well, we have a sell zone right up here profit. <laughs> if, we, if we bought right there, you know, I mean, that doesn't look big that's because there's so much movement in the market, but I mean, it's four points. Okay? So, you know, it's 80 bucks a contract. Comes on back down. Bust through again. Okay, where are we going to go? We're looking for that next zone. You know, or deviation level. The zone finally forms right here. We get some red yellow. Let's definitely take some profit. We, you know, we got another four or five points. So, now, oh, we got red. Go short. Where are we going to go short to? Well, we're definitely looking at targeting down at this deviation level. So we go over here, coming on down. We're not going to buy. We don't have any green yet. We're not buying yet. Okay? We got red, though. And we're not going to add on to our short because it needs to bust through. But finally, do get a short there. But we're already in a short. So you're probably taking profit on this thing as it oscillates. Because I would if I was seeing this zone. I mean, I'd love to say, yeah, I'll write it all the way to the bottom. But I'd probably end up taking profit somewhere in here. I'd look at for another short. And then I get another zone. It starts bouncing there. Okay, take profit on that one. Finally, get some green. We buy. Well, we think it's going to go way up here. It doesn't. It oscillates around, oscillates around. We get a sell zone. We take some profit. We probably made like a point on that. So now we got a sell zone. It turns red. Boom. We go short. We sell it. Okay, everything's red. Where are we going to go? Well, we're going to look at first this zone right here. Okay, I'm going to tighten my stop a little bit. I mean, it's pretty much right where I got in. Not a lot to do. Go down to the deviation level. Okay, definitely uh, let's tighten that up a little bit more. We see it coming on down. I'm waiting on it to hit this level. It doesn't hit this level. When it does, it makes a new level. And things start going sideways. Okay, I'm going to take profit. I'm going to look for, you know, potentially another sell if it breaks below it. You know, it doesn't. It pops up. It's green. Okay, I'm going to buy. We got a new zone. It's red. I'm out. I'm probably about to break even on that trade. So it goes short down here. But remember, I'm not going to sell. Even though that's red, I'm not going to sell unless it busts through this zone. We're right in the zone. I'm going to wait for it to bust through it. This one does bust through it. I go short, it oscillates around on me, comes down, makes a new buy zone. So I go in, oscillating, you're probably gonna, you know, again, you're gonna tighten your stop up, only make a point or two on that trade. Finally, thing turns green, cool, we're gonna go long. Where are we gonna go now? We're gonna go up to the next sell zone. It goes on up, we're targeting this one, but a new one forms. This new one forms, it's oscillating in here, let's go ahead and take profit. We're not gonna buy unless everything's green and it busts above this level, and we're gonna be targeting this level. So, so I know I'm like I'm probably like some people feel like I'm just talking in circles, but I'm hoping that it's sticking. So yeah. yes, at low volume and high volume. I mean, volume's off the roof today, and this is working between the exits, right? So I mean, I'm using them regardless, but especially on low volume days because you don't expect big old moves. I mean, to me, the number one benefit of the zones is profit target, profit target, profit target, right? That helped me filter. Like, I may go short right here because everything's red, you know, but I'm not really coming off of the zone. There's nothing there. Like, I like coming off of the zone and selling, and then I go into this, but I'm not going to sell unless it breaks below that low. So I'm not selling, I'm not selling. Finally, over here, I'm selling, okay? Now, I'll buy. If I get some green, I got some green. Boom, it oscillates, oscillates, oscillates. In my sell zone, great, take profit. Okay, let's wait for, you know, either break out of the high to buy or some red to go short. Ooh, we get some red. Okay, cool. Let's go short. Let's go short. It drops down. It's the green zone. Okay, let's buy it back. Let's close it out. Let's, you know, look for a potential buy or sell. It turns green. Let's take it. Let's grab a few more points. I mean, this is a crappy time right here. I think we're doing a whole lot of nothing. We're just grabbing two, three, four points over and over again. Okay, I'm not doing anything. All I got is green. I'm not selling. I'm not selling. Okay. We go over. Finally, I got some red. All right, well, I can make a couple points on that. It drops down. Tighten my stops up a little bit. Take a profit. Make a couple points. Maybe three or four if you're really good. Okay? And looking for a buy, but there's no green above that green. I'm not buying. I'm not buying. I'm waiting for red below or green above. I got red below. Okay, I'm going to short. All right, we're going to short. Where are we going to go? We're going to go down here to the next deviation level or the next zone. Another zone pops up. 
It's bouncing on that zone. Okay, great. So let's see here. It's oscillating, oscillating, oscillating. Alright, let's go ahead and just take profit. Let's see if we can get another sell. Just break below this zone with the rest before I do it. I mean, it's just repeat, 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 repeat. So, um, so I'm hoping that this is, you know, like it's, it's looking at the chart. But see how the charts are making it easier, the indicators are making it easier for me to read the price action? I got trend catcher staying short. I got trend flip staying short. I got MVP staying short. I got the trend bar, you know, top staying short. I got, I mean, I just, I got the institutional zone staying short. Uh, even if they're green, well, it broke below and everything's red. So, hey, let's go. Let's take it, you know? Like, now here, let's, let's look at that. That was Okay. Like this will be that's nighttime, but <laughs> so you go over here. All right, went down, boom, boom, boom. You tighten your stop, tighten your stop, tighten your stop. You're a rock star, boom. Final key takeoff profit. We got green. We're going long. Our stops down here. We're off. We're waiting for it to get to the point seven. It basically gets right up there. We get a red sell zone. We take profit. We didn't make a lot. We traded at night. That's usually what happens. But we made four points. Okay. So, not bad. We got a red sell zone, we're going short. Where are we going short to? We're going short down to the next deviation or the zone. Comes on down, really choppy, comes on down, comes on down. It hits not only settlement, it also hits the lower, you know, ice zone, and then we get a little pop right there on that zone. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that. I'm short. I'm gonna go ahead and take profit. Or at least take profit by the time over here. You make a few more points right there, it goes green, pop it up, take a little bit of profit. I mean you can literally just trade between these. Um, and that's crappy volume. So that's not like, oh, look, it's a trending day. I made money, you know. <laughs> it's like, well, so could any other monkey that hits the buy button when it was on green. Um, you know, I mean, this is not pretty. But buy, you know, you're waiting for a buy. You red, boom, boom, come down into a green. Another green. You get out. You take profit somewhere between where you sold over here when it broke through. Made a few points on that. Got green, goes up. Better be careful. You're at a settlement level, but you decide to go ahead and brave it. Okay? It goes on up. You get a sell zone. It's going sideways. Somewhere in here, you should have had a clue to take profit. Now, it turns red, and you're on a sell zone. Okay, great. Let's go short. Where are we going? We're going back down through the settlement. We expect chop, and then we are hoping to go on down and make a new zone for it. It does. It goes down. Boom, boom, boom. It hits it. We tighten our stop. Okay? You come up. It pop. It hits it again. So we're probably out because we tighten our stop. We never broke through that zone. And, but then it breaks back through it again. Does it with volume? Let's go on to the next level. So we go down there. Okay, we tighten our stop. Hit it. Take profit. I mean, that's not an easy day to trade, but that's not a bad, I mean, that went well. Then you go over here, and you're looking for a buy. You're looking for some green, but you don't have any zones that are unbroken around you. Nothing supporting you. Anything. Anywhere. I guess you could say right there, but you're doing nothing but sideways. There's no upward action. See, the market is not going up. It is going Sideward. I want the market to go up when I buy. I want the market to be going down when I sell. Okay? So the market is not going up. It's just going sideward. It's not breaking out of any recent highs or lows. Show it. I'd love to say I shorted there, but I didn't. Okay? I'm waiting for it to break below my most recent zone. It breaks below the zone. On that zone, it does so. Okay, it goes short. So where? To the next deviation. To the zone. I mean, it's round and round. And then I'm waiting for green. Okay, I got green. I do have a level. I'm pretty far from it. We are starting to trend a little bit. You could say you went for that one. Okay, fine. We're bouncing right off the ice. Okay, that's good. Comes down. I'm going to have my stop a little bit below this most recent low. So it's going to be a little further stop probably on this trade because I'm right at ice. And so it's bouncing right off the ice, right off the ice, right off the ice. Boom. Then we get a green solid breakout. You get this opportunity. If you got stopped out, you got another entry. Okay. Or you have to get your stop down here based on price action. You didn't get stopped out. So either you got stopped out and then you got a great run, or you didn't get stopped out. You stayed in the trade and got the great run. And then it ran on up, 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 up. And where to go? Well, it went to ice. Okay, so you better be tightening your stop. You got ice right there. Then it goes on up to deviations. Okay, I'm going to tighten the stop. Then we got a resistance zone. Okay, I'm going to tighten the stop. <laughs> then it goes up. We got another resistance zone up there. We're going to tighten the stop. And now finally it starts pulling back down. And so my stop should be hit by now. Um, if not, they definitely ought to be, you know, done whenever you get the red. And that's why I like this trend shop bar filter. 
the one that's changed those colors of the bars. It really helps me focus on that green even when I get these little down close bars in a trend. So. Is that enough? Y'all got it? I think if I do it again, it'll be like replay, replay. <laughs> Awesome. Well, maybe Cameron can chop some of that up, you know, like review of a trade and all that, and then going into this. Um, if you're going to do this on spreads, if you're going to trade between the zones, like really tight, then you're going to want close proximity spread. Just out of the gate. You're really going to want close proximity spread. Okay? So, because you're only going for like, sometimes you're getting two, three, four points. You don't want a spread that has a lot of premium because you're going to, you're not, you're going to make like half the amount. Okay? So, or that has a lot of proximity because you're going to make half the amount. Because premium needs the time to pass. So you want a close proximity spread if you're going to really trade right between these. Make it a lot easier. So to find those, I mean, just hit ATM on the scanner. Really easy. using all the fun new tools with the, you know, institutional zones and stuff that reach with all the new bars and all that. But let's go over here to the spread scanner. I need to say I want the um, near the market, sorry, that ATM, near the market MTM, near the market spread. And basically what that does is it shows you spreads that are within plus 10 or minus 10 of where the market is. So that gives you your close proximity spread. Sometimes there may not be any. And you may go on there and the market's just exploded like NASDAQ. Well, there's a couple. Okay, it's popped up. So you can go in, grab a couple points. I mean, this is not a trade you're going to go in and make $100 on. But, I mean, a lot of y'all are trading 50 bucks on a binary to make 20 bucks anyway. So if you can hop in, buy for 43 you know, and pop up and make $20 on the trade, it's not a bad thing. So that is a lot of premium. But yeah, we'll try to just get the, the raw recording up for you right away, and then um, set up the YouTube, and then put it in the forum for you, and post it on Facebook for you, and then um, we'll also see if we get it cut up a little bit. But, cool. All right, y'all have a great weekend, all right?